ラッシュの早さ比べかもう、これは本当に簡単。これは最も強い、最も強い、最も強い、最も強い、最も強い、最も強い、最も強い、最も強い、最も強い、最も強い、最も強い、最も強い、最も強い、Firstly, it's actually fun. Yep, you heard me. The rotation is easy yet beautiful. On top of that, we're also rocking a dual wield setup as it has been the most requested build on this channel to date. This has some absolutely massive benefits, however, compared to the two handed setup. For the fun factor, you're attacking just insanely fast. This, in turn, means a bunch of cooldown reduction via the hectic aspect. And due to this, We're even able to add Wrath of the Berserker into the build. And to make the build yet more fun, we're adding in Kick to stack up the Wrath of the Berserker buff. So you get to play both Bash and drop Kick enemies in the nutsack. And secondly, it's insanely easy to gear up. I'm recommending anyone to play this build, even if you're a dad with 19 children working 10 jobs with massive hemorrhoids. It's so easy to gear, in fact, that you don't need any Ubers, and we're sorting out berserking, vulnerable, and unstoppable without any convoluted gear requirements. I'm currently just rocking one Uber, and despite this, I'm able to blast through 130s. It's also cheap because you're not in need of any two handed gear, and for some reason, those stuff are selling for tens of billions. Hmm, I wonder why. And for the third reason why I think this is the best one is how insanely strong it is. Despite the lack of gear, you're able to generate near to 100% crit chance and 200% attack speed bonus when dual wielding. And as you are automatically also attacking faster with one handers, you're just blasting through content and resetting your cooldowns with ease. So, in short, play this build if you want something bonkers. That's cheap and insanely fun to play. All right, so what makes this build work then? Well, firstly, it's a bleed build utilizing the berserk ripping aspect along with the gushing wounds key passive. The build is, however, not entirely built around bleeding, as that would require you to grab a bunch of Ubers. Instead, we're making it a bleed hybrid. And despite not being a full bleed build, it's able to generate bleed ticks in the hundreds of millions. And using Rupture, Can deal up to 7 billion damage or so, despite sub optimal gear. Using gushing wounds also means that we want to stack as much crit chance and attack speed as possible to stack the bonus up. As we're using one handers, though, we're gaining both crit chance and attack speed bonuses automatically. For generating bleeds via berserk ripping, however, we are of course rocking the bash cleave tempers. You also need to be careful when it comes to slapping on different aspects and passives when rocking bleed, as berserk ripping does not benefit from a bunch of passives you may see in some builds. Other than generating big dam, we are also rocking a bunch of cool skills. Except for the shouts, that is, they're pretty boring. So, why are we using all of those skills? Well, first, we have rupture. This one generates a bunch of AoE damage while clearing along, with being able to generate 40% attack speed along with a permanent 10% extra damage. The shouts, well, they're shouts. Wrath of the Berserker is what makes this build so insane, though. If we just stand and pound Jason Voorhees and his ugly friends, we're able to reset it every 30 seconds, meaning we gain a whopping 100% big damn bonus every 30 seconds. But considering we have some downtime as we're running between elite enemies, we can actually get it up every elite we fight pretty much. And that, my friends, is absolutely bonkers. To stack the damage bonus up, we're utilizing Kick. This one does, however, have three additional benefits two being that we gain both berserking and vulnerable from Kick, and we won't need to worry about every dropping any of those. And the third reason being. It's pretty damn cool. I just love drop kicking enemies in the nutsack. It's funny as hell. And for our final skill, we have Evade. I'm rocking Metamorphosis in this build for everything except when I'm farming tormented bosses to keep up permanent unstoppable. 
This is just absolutely lovely. It also has one additional benefit though. If you use Metamorphosis instead of running, you get to keep your inner calm stacks, allowing you to keep up 30% big dam instead of 10 for longer fights. Except for when it bugs out. Because, well, it's not D4 without bugs. All right, so that's how the build works. For you to truly appreciate the genius that is this build, though, let me introduce you to my gear and aspects. I have one great piece here. All the others are easily obtainable. I'm also rocking a Sheko, but you don't really need it. The Tusk Helm of Yoritz is godly for this build, especially if you get some greater affixes on attack speed, for example. Next up is the chest. You want an identical one to this, but you want to hit the master working on all resistance or grab one with greater affix to sort that shit out with ease. For aspect, imprint the undying aspect. With the amount of attack speed you have in this build, this will make you an immortal god. And then we have the gloves. This is the only really insane gear piece I have. Having GA is not a requirement though, just grab one that has the highest possible affix roll. These gloves just absolutely insane. They make clearing trash insanely easy. And when you get a boss with ads, then you can get bleed ticking for a billion El Mao. Next up are the pantaloonies. Bash ranks is the most important here, and you're also looking to grab one random resistance roll that is not cold resistance, because you'll get that from the paragons. The hectic aspect is also insanely important, resetting your cooldowns with ease. For your favorite sneakers, you obviously want a sleek pair of Nikes, but for second choice, you'll want these except that fire resistance should be strength or war cry ranks. Don't worry though about keeping track of this though, you'll find the optimal stats in the planner. The absolute most important stat here, however, is attacks reduce evade cooldown. By attacking, you'll then reduce the cooldown of your evade and you can use metamorphosis all the goddamn time for unstoppable. You don't even need to run using these LMAO, you'll basically become a fat shit smelling sorcerer just teleporting all over the place. Next up are the weapons. For Big Daddy Hammer, grab something like this. I would try to grab vulnerable damage and then temper on crit damage. To do this, however, you need to level up a rogue into World Tier 4 and temper that shit on your rogue character. For masterworking, always prioritize Bash Cleave and slap on the Berserk Ripping aspect for massive bleeds. Now I said that this was not a full bleed build, rather a hybrid. This is due to Berserk Ripping only taking the base damage, and we're still stacking some aspects that are not utilizing this just because they're so hecking good. One of these is the Moonrise aspect, granting both attack speed and big damn. You also want a two-handed sword here. This is due to two reasons. First, you get big damn from crit, and secondly, due to a secret tech. If you use Rupture with a two-handed sword and get Killing's Blows, then you can actually gain the 30% bleed damage bonus in the weapon arsenal. It's not entirely reliable, but definitely worth it when it happens. You could also use the Grand Daddy, but if you got godly rolls on a normal sword, then I'd rather go with that. For the other two weapons, the Rapid Aspect and Elements is the way to go. Don't get two maces, however, as you only need one for Bash to work. Rather grab a sword or axe in the other hand, or just save a slot for your P.E.K.K.A. Next up, we're going to take a look at my family jewels. Crit Chance, Counter Offensive and Cut to the Bones is what you want here. Attack Speed and Cooldown Reduction are also alright. And for Aspect, I'm rocking Adaptability. This does not work with Bleeds either, but it's insanely strong for the regular basic skill damage. Just don't roll guttural yell on this one. I bricked it and punched a wall in my monitor. We then have the rings. Mine are not that insane, but I'd focus on getting a GA crit chance and masterwork that shit. Other than that, attack speed, strength, and crit damage are all godly. This is also where I'm sorting out my damage while berserking. 
Two decent rolls are enough, as I'm sorting the Blood Rage node out in the Paragons instead. You also want Warcry cooldown reduction, of course, massive damage. Well, damn my man. You still here, huh? You must be a pretty awesome guy or woman, then. Let's take a look at the weapon arsenal now, so you don't fuck up and ruin the build. Unless you're using a one-handed sword, then there should only be one option for rupture, and that is two-handed sword. For the bash skill, however, you need to set it to dual wield. You then go into the weapon expertise and grab the two-handed axe for the massive 10% big damn bonus. Well, damn will you look at that. It's already skill tree a fucking clock, and you know it, baby. Now this one is truly nasty. I asked Arnie what he thought about my amazing skill tree, and this is what he had to say about it. I'm getting the feeling of coming, I'm getting the feeling of coming at home, I'm getting the feeling of coming, so I'm coming day and night. <laughs> oh my god! Hell yeah. Starting off, we max out Bash and grab Enhanced Bash to easier gain Fortify. We then drop a wet fart on the core skills and max out Imposing Presence and Martial Vigor to become an Immortal God. Also grab Challenging Shout and head on over to the Brawling skills. Grab Enhanced Kick for Vulnerable and Power Kick to spend all of your precious fury for Wrath of the Berserker. Drop kicking two enemies in the nutsack is enough to stack it up, and that's hecking easy to do. We then have War Cry along with Enhanced and Mighty War Cry. It's extremely important to keep up Fortify, and this along with Enhanced Bash sorts that shit out with ease. You also find Battle Fervor here, which is one easy way to gain Berserking. In other words, drop kick a loser and become berserk. This along with war cry keeps it up permanently. Next, we want all of these passives for big dam. Also grab rupture along with enhanced and warriors rupture for big AOE and 40% attack speed. We then go to the ultimate skills, grab duelist and one point in wallop. This doesn't work with bleed, but we had one point to spare, so might as well use it for a bit of damage. We also want Wrath of the Berserker, and then we go to the key passive. Gushing Wounds is just massive, stacking bleeds into insanity. This makes crit chance the most important stat, followed by crit damage and vulnerable. And why vulnerable? Well, damn my man, that's due to the Paragons, so let's head on over there and take a look. The time I spent on these Paragons are pure insanity. Meaning, if you don't subscribe to the channel after this video, I swear to God, I'll fucking lose it. In any way, start off with Wrath and as much crit as possible. We then go to the Flawless Technique board, where we find 8% crit chance and Ambidextrous for 8% damage and buffing our nearby friendly nodes. This is where we find Hemorrhage, which is the reason we want a shit ton of Vulnerable. Grab this one last, however. Instead, go to the Blood Rage board, where the node should be capped as long as you have two berserking rolls on your gear, and socket exploit for the fast, vulnerable, and damage. Next up is the Decimator node. This one is up permanently since Rupture always overpowers, and we socket ire for the damage reduction and damage while berserking. Hecking yummy, am I right? And finally, Carnage. Yet another way of gaining attack speed, and we also socket marshal here to boost some damage reduction and damage while berserking. You also have some additional here, meaning you should get capped even with shit gear. And that, my friends, is the Paragon. Pretty hot, right? Yeah, hopefully you still have some juice in you for some gameplay, because it's pretty damn important. When it comes to the shouts and wrath of the berserker, it's rather simple. You want to use these as frequently as possible, so just pop that shit. If you're pushing, however, then you want to save the ultimate for big elite packs. What's important, however, is the rotation, which is rupture and kick. For killing packs of enemies, you want to use rupture as often as possible for the big AOE damage. It's also absolutely insane for the Pain Gorger Gloves, as you'll mark all nearby enemies with ease. Another bonus of Rupture is if you kill enemies with it, you'll gain a 30%
bleed bonus. So finish off some mobs and gain the big dam. For smaller packs and bosses, however, you don't want to keep spamming it. Instead, you use it every time your attack speed slows down. You then follow up the rupture with a kick to the nutsack. Seeing as rupture grants attack speed for five seconds and kick grants vulnerable for four seconds. Kick is also the easiest way to gain berserking along with war cry. And if you ever drop berserking, then you're fucked. So don't do that LOL. And for final gaming tip, use Wrath of the Berserker followed by two kicks to gain the full bonus. Don't waste one kick and then pop Wrath of the Berserker, my man, because else you'll be losing precious uptime. I have done this more than once, and I'm a stupid asshole for doing it every time. All right, that's how to get hecking good. Before I leave you to start blasting, we also need to check out the consumables. I'm currently a broke boy and can't afford them, but you definitely want these. The chorus of war incense is massive, granting a whopping 5% crit chance. This, along with the precision elixir, will boost your damage significantly. You can also combine it with anti-venin to stay alive easily. Typically, though, I just slap on a fortitude elixir and go full brain AFK as I'll be unkillable. That works too. All right, I'm done now. Drop a sub, my man, and I'll see you in the next one.